Hey, welcome back to the Krabby Dice. Today we're looking at Great Western Trail. So, what is the theme to this game? Well, we're ranchers and we're gonna be trying to sell our cows to the cities across America to try to make the most points and money as possible. All right, well, it's a Euro, so we're just trying to collect as many points as we can. So, this is the setup and rules video. Click the link below for my uh, thoughts and playthrough. Uh, before we get started, three things. Please like, comment, subscribe to my videos. That will be amazing. Let's just go to the setup. All right, welcome to the Great Western Trail setup. There's a lot to cover, so bear with me. So the first thing you're going to want to do is lay out your beautiful game board. Next, we're going to tackle the neutral buildings. These are the buildings with the dark brown or grayish background. Give it a nice shuffle and put them out on the game board wherever you see a darkened square. All right. I would suggest not to play with the default lettering because it makes the game a little easy and you're going to have some super high scoring games. Uh, this is how I like to play. All right, next you're gonna grab your master station tiles here. There's five of them for the five spots up there. So again, just shuffle them, and then just place them out in their respective spots. All right, next we're gonna have a couple of decks here that we need to set up. So you have your contract deck here, give it a shuffle and you're always gonna display four cards, no matter the number of players. I'm gonna leave the deck right here. Next is the cow market deck. All right, these are all the cows. So I already took the 10 cards, but you're gonna look at the little display here and according to the number of players you're playing with, that's how many cards you'll draw from the deck and lay out on your market over here. So I like to splay out the cows so you can see the victory points down here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put them all here. You're gonna put the brown ones here and the pink ones here or purple. All right, next we're going to put out some of the initial hazards out. So there are three stacks of tiles. So there's threes, twos, and ones. You're going to take seven of the number ones for your initial hazards. All right, just put, put them on the game board. And what you're going to do is you're going to place them in their respective spots. So if you have any teepees, you're going to put them in the teepee area here. For the water hazards, you're going to start off with number one down here and work your way up. For sun hazards, same thing, work your way up. And if we had any rock hazards, they'll be over here and you'll work your way up. All right, you're gonna set up your initial employee area here as well. So for that, you're gonna grab as many number twos to fill out the first two rows according to the number of players. So we're gonna play three players. So I'm gonna need five tokens to fill up the first five spots here. If you were playing four, you'd need seven. We'll take out our round tracker. It's not really a round tracker. I'll explain in the rules, but this is going to keep track of the game length. All right. Next, we're going to set up our far side board over here. So you're going to grab a couple of number ones, a couple of the number twos, and a couple of the number threes. You'll put every player's train on Kansas City, which is the initial spot right over there. All right. And that's it for the game board. Now we're going to go to our player board. So <laughs> you're going to have a lot of these tokens. So wherever on your player board you see a red or a colored circle, you're going to add one of these tokens. So you should fill up all of them except for the first two on the left over here. All right, next, you're going to give every player their starting deck of 14 cows. You're going to tell us their color by the little sheriff badge over here. Give it a good shuffle. And you can end up drawing four to start the game, but I'll just put the deck right here to start. All right, next you're going to give each player one of these starting objectives. So these have a darker background. Just shuffle up the deck and there you go. Just give each player one of these. See that? You're going to figure out who first player is. You're going to give them $6. So I'll be first player. Second player is going to get seven. Third player is going to get eight. And if you're playing four players, they're going to get nine. Lastly, for the player area, we do have our colored building tiles here. What you're supposed to do is the first player is going to jumble them all together front and back because there's an A and a B side for every building. And after you're going to set them in order and tell all the players on which side each number is. So you can play with 1A, 2B, 3A, 4A, 5B and so on. Just for this scenario, I'm going to set all of them to the B side just for just for fun. <laughs> Uh, before I forget, you are going to have a marker here on the zero space of the certificate. And there you go. We're set to go. Let's go to the rules.
All right, welcome to the rules section for Great Western Trail. Oh boy, it's hard to even decide where to start. But first, just to give you a super broad overview of what you're actually doing in this game, we're going to be using our little cowboy meeple here, doing actions along the trail. It's Great Western Trail. And then eventually we're going to have to do our delivery by uh, sending our cowboy to the end over there and selling our cows, maybe delivering to one of the cities. And after that, that's going to reset your pawn to the beginning. So it's going to be sort of working in a gigantic circle. So you're going to be doing actions, delivery, and then working way back down and doing actions and delivery. All throughout that time, you're going to be having a hand of cows. You're going to be selling cows for money. You're going to be hiring workers. You're going to be moving your train along. You're going to be buying cows, building buildings to fill out the game board because it's pretty sparse right now. All these empty spaces will start getting filled up by uh, yours and opponent's buildings. All right, so that's a super broad overview. Um, I think the best way to tackle this is to deal with the three things you do always on your turn. First, I'm gonna talk about how you move your meeple. Second, I'm gonna talk about all the specific actions you can sort of do and all the caveats to all those actions. And then we'll talk about scoring at the end. All right, so let's get started with movement. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do on your turn is always moving your meeple. You can never stay still, right? So you're gonna move your meeple. And if you look at your player board, it's separated into three sections. So you have your A, which is movement, B, which is actually doing your action, then refilling your hand. But we'll talk about all those things later. But movement, you can see you have a little three next to your movement. That's how much you can actually move your little pawn guy here. In the future, you will be able to upgrade this action so you'll be able to move a bit more. But at the start of the game, it's only three. We'll talk about this during the uh, delivery action, how to upgrade these. Now, a couple of things to notice when you're doing a movement. If you ever run through a hand that's green or black, you're going to have to pay that player uh, the money that's on your player board here. All right. So at the start of the game and just to start of the game, you can literally put your pawn anywhere you want. I'm not going to pretend this is start a game. I'll pretend that we're already in the middle of a game. So let's say I had previously done this action. So now my, on um, the start of my turn, I can move one to three spaces. So I can go either here, 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 or here. The reasons for that is you're just going to follow the lines on the board and there's arrows there to indicate how the line flows and you can move zero to, well, oh, sorry, one to three spaces. So I can move one to get here. I can do one, two to go here. I can do one, two to move here, or I can do one, two, and three to move here. You're gonna notice you skip all the spots that are empty, right? So it's one to three, but when people start building houses here, then you're gonna have to spend time visiting their houses, and eventually it's gonna be harder and harder to go farther down the line. All right, so it's a game that's fast at the beginning, and as people build houses, it starts slowing down and slowing down, and at the end, it's kind of a crawl to get all the way back to Kansas City. All right, so that's everything you need to know about movement. You just have to really pay attention to these hand symbols. If you do go by the hazards, each hazard counts as a spot. So let's add a movement of three. I go one, two, three. You'd have to pay to the bank because you went through a hand. If you go through a hand and it's a player, a player's token, just like this one here, you don't have to pay yourself if you go through your own, obviously. But if this was a blue tile and I went through it, I would have to pay the blue player uh, coins. All right, let's go to the next section. All right, so after movement, you're actually going to perform the action on the tile that you're on. Okay, so let's look at the anatomy of a tile before going into all the actions and what it means. Okay, so there's two types of lines that you'll ever see on a tile. There's, I guess these are horizontal. No, horizontal is like this. There's horizontal lines and there's diagonal lines. So a diagonal line means or, and the horizontal line means and. So if you do the action on this tile, you get to either do this or this, and you get to do this. If you see three horizontal means something and something and something. Okay, so that's the anatomy of a tile. When we go through all the actions, and I'm gonna explain all the tiles, I'll actually explain in detail what the tile actually means. But that's basically the anatomy of a tile. Okay, now, before we talk about all these actions, just one thing I really have to stress. 
It's very important to realize that if you look at your player board here, this section was for movement and this is for actions. And it's very clearly trying to explain to you that on your tile and on neutral tiles, you could do the action, which is the green exclamation. But on other players' tiles and on hazards, you can't perform the action. You'll only be able to perform an auxiliary action. I'll talk about auxiliary actions later, but this is a very important note, okay? The third thing that can happen is if you reach the end of the line, you have to perform a, a delivery, but I'll talk about deliveries near the end of the video. Okay. So now let me go through every single tile and every single action and their iconography, and you'll sort of get the idea of how things work. But the, in, in general, there's four main actions you're performing all the time, hiring a worker, moving your train, buying a cow or building a building. There's some extra things like auxiliary actions and uh, certificates and all that jazz, but we'll go through each action in detail one by one. All right, the first action we're going to tackle is hiring an employee. For that, we're going to use the neutral tile. All these icons could appear in your regular color tiles, but the icons are all the same. So for all these examples, I'm just going to use the neutral tile. All right. So just like I explained in the overview, what's going to happen is you're going to start on the left here and work your way to the right. So this action on the first one, you're going to see it says discard a number two white cow to get two dollars from the bank. A lot of the neutral buildings start off that way. And this is the icon for discarding. It's a red arrow going down. All right. So, for example, if you have this card in your hand, you can discard this card to your discard pile and get two dollars from the bank. All right, the next icon you're gonna see, this is the hiring a worker icon. So for this action here, you're actually gonna look at the chart over here and the cost of the employee is on the right of the row that he's on. A very important note, you can only ever hire employees that are above the row of this marker. So at the start of the game, you can only hire the first three up here. Later on in the game, this is gonna drop down and every row above it could be hired but not the one that it's on, all right? So that after the, somebody makes their first delivery, this is gonna drop down, and then you'd be able to buy somebody from this row. All right, that's how this works. And the cost, like I said, is on the right over here. All right, the second icon that you're gonna see here is you can actually perform a second buy with this neutral building, but the second one will be at a cost of an extra $2. So let's say you bought the first one at six, you can buy another at eight because it's plus two or an extra two bucks. Now what happens when you actually buy the employee? That's where you're going to look at your player board. So let's say I bought uh, this conductor over here. So each employee that you buy goes on the tracks over here or your player board over here. So your conductors are going to be placed at the bottom here, your construction workers in the middle and your cowboys on the top here. So let's say I hired my first conductor. He's going to go on the first spot over here. Whenever you cover up a, uh, an ability or a bonus, you get to trigger that bonus right away. So for example, the first conductor lets you discard a level one cow and get a certificate. So if I had a level one cow, let's see if the first one's a level one cow. No, it's a level two. Let's say I had this in my hand, I can discard this into my discard pile and gain a certificate, right? Because that's what that that's what that bonus is giving me. Every time you see a one cube going down, that deals with the certificates. Right, and that's how this board sort of works. So uh, you're gonna be gaining employees, you're gonna keep stacking them up, and we're gonna talk about the other actions. They all get bonuses depending on how many employees you have of that type. All right, just an extra note before we move on to the next subject is you're going to notice these point scoring things over here. One way to score at the end of the game is the more employees of the same type you have, you'll fill up the last two spots here and you'll get four points for each employee that's in this row or this row. All right, that's everything you need to know about hiring an employee. All right, the next action we're going to talk about is buying cows. For that, we're going to look at the neutral tile here. And this is whenever you see this uh, bull over here, those are cows. But first, just to explain to you this tile, how it works, similar to all the other tiles, here you can discard a two black cow to get two bucks. And then 
and you can perform the action which is buying a cow all right so that's what the bullhead means it means doing the buying cow action now this whole action depends on how many cowboys you have on your personal board okay so at the start of the game you only have one but eventually you might hire more cowboys so you'll keep st stacking them over here on this row okay so the prices of all the cows really depends on the cowboys so you're going to see here marked in each section the amount of cowboys you need to even buy one and then the price is going to be on the bottom right so for example let's look at this purple section here you need at least two cowboys to buy a level five cow and it's going to cost you twelve dollars but if you have four cowboys you can buy one and it'll only cost you six all right they all sort of work the same way so let's look at the first three uh sections over here these deal with these three colored cows yellow red and blue so you can buy one cow if you had one cowboy for six dollars which we all have one printed on our board so that's our default action but if you had two cowboys you can buy one of these cards for three dollars and if you had three cowboys you can buy two of these cards for five dollars now when you buy a cow you can take whichever one you like and you'll notice that the blue ones are always three points the red ones are two and the yellow ones are one for the brown ones they range in points and also for the purple ones they also range in points okay so it is first come first serve on getting the cows when you get a cow it always goes to your discard pile and you'll see it again when you shuffle your deck and you go through it again okay so always the discard pile now the second option you can do is for every cowboy point you can actually draw two more cards off the the deck of cow, uh, cows and add it to the market display here so let's say you have four cowboys on your display you can use one of those cowboys to get two cards from the uh, from the draw deck and add it to the market let's say you didn't really like the cows that were there or they're really depleted so you would need to use one to add two cows and then you'd have three more to do a purchase so if you manage to draw let's say two yellows or two reds or a combination here you can use those three cowboys to do this action to buy two of them for five gold all right you even have the choice let's say you flip over the first one you draw two cards you don't like it use another one to draw another two cards you don't like it you do another one again and so on and so on you're free to use your points of cowboys however you like all right the only other thing i need to mention about this is i'll mention it now but there is a two other ways for the market to refill itself is when this marker starts going down when we go from this row to this row so when this marker goes over this line you'll actually refill the market market you're going to look at this chart over here and add that many cows from the draw stack back into the market so you'll do that twice during the game besides that the only way to refill the market is through a cowboy action here this is basically all you need to know about the cow market and adding it to your deck all right the third major action you do on your turn or you can do on your turn is building a building on the game board so for that we're going to look at this neutral building here and you're going to see the little icon here which is building with the yellow it means placing a building on the game board so again the, the anatomy of this neutral tile here is you could discard a number two green cattle to get money and then you can perform the action all right so building a building so how does that work so what you're going to do is you're going to go to your player board <laughs> and again just like cattle you're going to look at how many construction workers you have or whatever these things are called and though that's the level of building that you can actually build so at the start of the game you have a one so you can only build the number one and the number two because there's a one on the top left all right so the three has a number two all right so let's say i want to build this all right so the cost of any building is you need to pay two dollars per level of that building so let's say you're building a five level uh let's say you had five construction workers and you're building a five level building on the game board it's going to cost you ten dollars so for every level you have to pay two dollars all right so once you've picked out the building you want to build you can literally build it anywhere that's free on the game board no restrictions so i can put it here i can put it here i can put it here 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 just 
keep in mind that if you do put it on the path of a hazard, you'd have to walk through a hazard every time you trigger that building. Okay. But there are some benefits of placing it at the end of hazards is that after performing the action, you do also get to trigger the little added benefit. It's a little benefit for putting stuff at the end of hazards. It could be useful or not during the game, your choice. All right. So that's how buildings uh, work. Now the second option you have is instead of building a building from scratch, you can actually upgrade a building. So let's say I had built this number one building in a previous turn over here. And let's just say I had three construction workers. Now, when I trigger the build a building action, I have the option to upgrade a building. So if my current level is three what i can do is do an upgrade of three to any building on the board so i can actually raise this building to a level four building so this is a one plus three is four so i can actually go to my stack of buildings here find the level four one let's say this one and actually replace that building I would still need to pay six because that's the difference every level. So that would be a difference of three levels. I have to still pay six coins to do that. This tile would then go into the game box. You remove it from the game. But now I got a brand new building on the board. Alternatively, you can just put the building on top of it so you don't lose it or have to put it in the game box. Sort of something that I do. Now, at the end of the game, these buildings that you build, just like cattle, they'll score you points. Okay, and remember only you can perform the action on your own building. So if you build a super uber powerful building, uh, opponents have to walk past it, but you can actually stop to perform the action. All right, that's building a building. Next, we're going to talk about moving your train. So for that, we're going to look at this neutral building here. And that's where you see the little icon here with a train moving. <laughs> so the number inside the train is how many sp spaces he's actually going to move but the more importantly moving trains deals a hundred percent with how many conductors you have sometimes it doesn't because you can pay to move your train but most of the time it depends on how many conductors so let's go to our player board and just to give you an idea right now i have two conductors so when i would perform this action here i would be able to move my train two spaces so here we're looking at the top of the board and the way it works is you're just going to count and move up that many spaces. So everyone starts in Kansas City, so you're going to move up one, two. Now, it's very, very important in this game is that you skip spaces with trains already on it. So if the next person would move three, it would go one, two, and three. You would actually be on the number four spot by skipping this train here. And if you would move one, you would go here. But then if you would move one again, you would actually move on to the third spot right over here. All right, so you don't count spaces where somebody already is in. All right, some extra special rules about movement. If you ever hit this fork in the road here, you have a choice to either go down and stop here to deal with this uh, terminal or this master station, or you can just keep going, your choice. All right, if you do decide to turn into a master station and stop, you got a couple of options. You could pay the cost there and leave an employee to both take the points for end game and take this end game tile. I'll show you that in one second, but what you're gonna have to do is pay $2. So you pay $2 from your stash into the general supply. Take one of your white tokens. The reason it's white is we're gonna show you in the scoring uh, for trains later, but because the outside is white, you're gonna leave a token here. You're also gonna take an employee. So let's say I wanna leave this guy behind. He's gonna now work in this train station. And as a reward, you're gonna get this and victory points for end game. All right, and these all work the exact same way. There's an end game bonus at the bottom here. So this one is for every two objectives, I get three points. And there's a top part, which is an immediate effect that happens right away. So here I would, let, I would ha take a hazard or ATP right away. All right, just FYI. We're gonna talk about it later, but during deliveries, if you have this tile, you always have a plus one to your total. That's how these work. And basically that's all you need to know about trains. Next, let's talk about auxiliary actions. So for that, we'll look at the same exact tile again. 
So remember, we get to move our train and you get to do an auxiliary action. So all auxiliary actions, you look at your own player board. And you're gonna see that it stands here for a row. So you're gonna see one X and one X, and this is one row of auxiliary actions. So let's look at our player board over here. And performing an auxiliary action means doing a row of auxiliaries over here. So you get to choose which action you wanna do. And if you've uncovered a tile or a circle in that row, you get to perform that action. So at the start of the game, you wouldn't even be able to perform these three auxiliary actions because none of these spots are free. So at the beginning of the game, you can only get a coin with one auxiliary action or discard a card, draw a card and discard a card from your deck. All right, those are the only auxiliary actions you can technically do. Once you start upgrading your area over here, let's say I remove this token here, you're gonna, you can actually get two gold instead of one gold because I'd be performing once here and once here. I can also upgrade down here. So for example, if I had this removed, I could pay one coin to move my train once. All right, and if I had both of these tokens removed, I can pay two coins to move my train twice. All right, let's go through all these auxiliary actions one at a time and I'll explain you what they do. This one is just getting coins. This one is you draw a card from your draw stack and then discard a card to your discard pi uh, pile. This one is move your train back one and pay a coin to gain a certificate. So you'll do that and you move down. Don't forget that you have to pay one and move a train back. This one is pay a coin to move your train forward. You can do it once or twice. And this one is move your train back to discard a card in your hand from the game. So let's say those pesky one train, uh, one cattle that you tr sort of want to get rid of in the game. So this action is the only way or that icon there means discard it from the game, but it has to be in your hand. So if this was your hand, you can perform that action or that auxiliary action to remove this Jersey cow from the game. Okay. Those are all the auxiliary actions. All right, so now before talking about deliveries, we're just gonna talk in a broad sense, some of the other icons that might come up when you do uh, actions or uh, some of the other things that uh, icons you might have to look at, all right? So whenever, in general, whenever you see a green icon, it means gain, and whenever you see a red icon, it means discard or lose, all right? So for example, I'm just gonna look at this one as an example of a neutral tile. Here it says, discard two of the exact same cows from your hand to gain $4 from the general supply, and you can take any hazard you want by paying $7, okay? The hazard is the hand sign. So for example, you could take this hazard and all hazards are, are straight up victory points. You might also need hazards to, to fulfill some of these objectives. For example, uh, uh, TP's, oh, well, TP's not a, a hazard, but actually there are none here. <laughs> uh, let me find one here, there you go. So for example, if you had this objective here, you would need at least one hazard at the end of the game to try and score this card. Okay, so that's this tile here. Let me look at something else that we can look at. So here, this tile here, we already looked at it before. Here you either gain a certificate or take an objective. So this little icon here means objective card. So you can take any card you want. When you take a card, it goes into your discard pile. Very important. It doesn't go into your display right away. Because let's look in, uh, at the anatomy of an objective card. Okay, So it's going to go in your deck. You're going to shuffle your deck eventually and this is going to end up in your hand. Now, when you have it in your hand and you play it to the game board, that's when you actually activate the objective, which means you could score the point or lose the points if you don't successfully um, uh, get the requirements but you also get this one time bonus up here when you play the card so for example there's different things you'll gain this one lets you move up your train twice some of them give you money some of them uh, let you move through other players or move, take extra movement so on and so on and so on all right so it's very important it goes to your discard pile it's because it it gives you the option because if you don't want to play this card in the future because you don't think you can satisfy this you're not going to lose the points if it's still in your deck at the end of the game it's only going to lose your points if you play it on the game board and you don't successfully get what's in it or get the requirements. Okay, so those are objectives in that icon. Put this back. I think lastly, we're going to look at the TP. This is just take a TP. When you look at the TPs over here, 
when you take a TP, you gain the coins or pay the coins what's on the top. So if you take any of these TPs down here, you're gonna take coins. And if you take any of these TPs, you're gonna lose coins. Obviously, you'd wanna take these before you take these, but hell, maybe you have a requirement to take a blue or a green TP. For example, that one needs a green one. Okay? That's that. All right, the last action you can do on your turn or the last possible action you do is doing a delivery. So for example, if you're near the end of the game board and you have to move three and you reach the end of the line, well, you have to make a delivery. So let's just remind you by going to your player board over here. So you're either doing an action on your spot or neutral board, doing an auxiliary action on somebody else or a hazard, or doing a delivery. So let's just talk about delivery in general. So delivery is pretty simple. That's where we're gonna follow these five steps and you're gonna follow them in order every single time. All right, so the first two, three here, they're very simple. You're gonna pick one of the two tiles that are there and put it on the game board. So if it's a TP or a hazard, you just pick one of them and you place it where it belongs. So for example, this hazard here, I would place here and then I'd refresh the, the token from the general supply. You'll do the exact same thing for the next two rows. For number two, I really don't have a choice. They're both the same. And the way the employees work here is you always fill from left to right, starting from the row that the uh, token is on. So here we're sort of filled up so the next employee would actually go on this spot here so we're going to move down the token and place the employee here i'd refill this from the general supply and then i have to choose from the number threes so let's say i pick this uh worker here and i place it here the next person would have to place this token here and the next one would have to place this token here and then this will move down remember when purchasing or hiring a employee it's always the ones above where the token currently is Okay, then obviously refill from the general supply. That's a number two. That's a number three. And then we get to number four, which is scoring our hand. So you're always going to have a hand of four or five. We're going to talk about refreshing your hand in the next section. But let's just simulate that one, two, three, four. This is the four cards in my hand, random cards. And what you're going to do is you're going to take all the unique cows or cattle in your hand. So you start off by taking all the unique ones. So this one's not going to score for sure. So you can discard it if you like. All right. So my total value is five. You have an option of adding certificates as well. So let's go to my player board. Let's say I had two certificates. I can use two certificates. So now my total is seven. All right. So five plus two certificates is seven. And then you're going to gain that much money. So from the general supply, I get $7. All right. And then I would discard my hand. That's what this means. So every time you do delivery, you basically score your hand with certificates and then you discard your hand. So now I would discard my hand. And next you're going to go to number five. This is where we're going to be doing upgrades to our board and making the actual delivery. So now my total was seven. So the city that you can deliver to has the minimum value required below the city. So let me zoom in a little bit. Hopefully it'll work. There you go. So you're gonna see that Colorado Springs needs a six and Santa Fe needed an eight. So if my total was seven, I can deliver to anywhere before Santa Fe. And the way deliveries work, it's pretty cool, is we're upgrading our board at the same time. So if it's a white delivery marker, you're gonna notice that the outline is white. And if it's black, it's here. So, but you're gonna take the same colored token from your player board. So the first few that you're gonna do are always white. So you're gonna take one of these white discs from your player board and put it on that city. For example, if I wanted to upgrade this auxiliary action over here, I would take this token and actually deliver it to Colorado Springs. Okay, now very, very important note is you can never have more than one of your own tokens per city. So you can be in every city at most one time, except, except, except for San Francisco at the end there where you can deliver as many times as you want and you'll get nine points for each token there. Good luck trying to get more than two tokens in there. <laughs> it's probably not going to happen. Another thing you're going to realize by putting tokens is that whenever you make a connection, so that's the green line there, you're going to gain what's in the middle. So this, you're going to gain an objective card. Here, you're going to gain points at the end of the game. Points, points. Uh, here, you lose points, but you also get an objective that you can sort of take to minimize the, the penalty and so on and so on. All right. After the delivery, so that's the delivery part here, you have to pay the difference between your train and that city. 
So during the game, we're moving our train up. So let's just say I was still here. And let's just say I delivered to Colorado Springs. I would have to pay $2 to the bank because there's two red X's between my train and Colorado Springs. Let's say I was here, then I wouldn't have to pay anything because I'm at the same location or further down. All right, so let's say I was here and I was delivering to El Paso. I would have to pay one, two, three, four, five, six gold after the delivery. All right, kind of expensive. All right, that's how deliveries work. Also, I already mentioned the black borders. Those ones you're gonna take from your black border. So there's two areas really. There's increasing your hand size for the rest of the game. So instead of four, you'll have five. You can increase it to six if you uncover both. And then here is your actual movement on the game board. So normally it was always three, but you can actually upgrade it to move either five or four or six if you have both. All right, the last one down here is an extra certificate. Obviously this one would need it to have been placed on the game board before you have a chance of putting this one. That's mostly everything you need to know about deliveries and upgrading your player board. After you've performed your delivery, you're gonna move your meeple to the horse figure there, which just signifies that you're gonna move your meeple back to the beginning of the line to get ready for next turn where you're gonna start your one to three movement or more from here. All right, those were all the actions. That was quite a bit. So let's just talk about two other things. At the end of your turn, you're always gonna refresh your hand. So you move, you do the action, you refresh your hand. This is just an indicator of how many cards you have to draw up to every single time. So here I have four until I've upgraded one of these spots. All right, and then you're gonna keep playing, doing those three things, movement, action, redraw, until this token falls off the track here. When that happens, whoever triggered that is gonna get this chit, which is actually two points for the end of the game. And every other player is gonna have one more turn and that'll trigger the end game. You're gonna tally it up and see who wins. All right, so the major points or major places where you can get points are the cows, you get it for your buildings, don't forget to count those. You're going to get it for your objectives that you've activated. You'll put your cards on the objectives, you, they can only count for once. For example, if this needs uh, three cows and that needs three cows, you need six three cows to satisfy both objectives. You're going to score your uh, hazards, they're going to score points, you're going to score the tokens. Your money, I believe it's a 10 to 1 ratio. You'll just tally it up and see who wins. I hope that was clear. Let me know in the comments below if you need some help or if something wasn't uh, um, emphasized enough or if anyone else has tips. There you go. So click on the link below for the playthrough. If not, I'll see you on the next one.